Hey you guys, what is going on? Welcome back to Home with Kimberly. And today I wanted to give you a sourdough starter update. So, kind of funny, kind of tragic story uh, with Larry Boy. Um, I finally did get some whole wheat flour and decided that I wanted to, I wanted to start another starter with whole wheat flour. So I started that. And then I, someone had suggested that I feed my Larry boy, who is all purpose flour, um, some whole wheat flour as well. Maybe that would, you know, get some more action or fermentation going. So I did that. And I'll insert a picture or a little video I took of both of my starters um, after I had done the whole wheat flour. Now the whole wheat flour one that I've started has been looking beautiful almost from day one. So anyways, um, I kind of figured too, a couple of things. I think my first sourdough starter, um, the all-purpose flour, I think I was keeping it too wet and I don't think I was keeping it warm enough um, because I really started with this new sourdough starter, the whole wheat one, I started putting in the oven just with the oven light on and wrapping towels around it so that the light wouldn't come in, you know, to the starter. And it's just been doing really great. So I wonder if that was part of the problem. Well, I decided to cook dinner one night and turned on the oven and forgot that my sourdough starters were in there. So I had it on for maybe preheating like 60 seconds, something like that. Well, I immediately opened the door and I grabbed my starters out and I'll insert a picture here of my Larry Boy sour starter. I only had some plastic wrap over it and that plastic wrap melted. And I was just afraid that it might've melted down into the starter. So I just ended up pitching that one all together. Um, it was super slow going too. Like I said, I think maybe I didn't keep it warm enough. I think it was too wet. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to go with my whole wheat one if I didn't totally damage it. And I don't think I did. Um, and I, this is like on day, today is day six now for the whole wheat one and it's still doing just fine. So that one came out okay. Thank God I caught that in time. So let me turn you around here and I'm just going to uh, show you what's going on with my uh, whole wheat sourdough starter. Okay, you guys, so this is my sourdough starter, my whole wheat sourdough starter, and this is going on day six now. I have been feeding this at nighttime, um, so I will feed it again tonight. Things I've been doing differently. I've been keeping this warmer in the oven with the light on. I have not been keeping this as um, wet, been very careful with the ratios on that, and then I have not been stirring this except for when, right before I feed it. So I only stir it and then dump out the amount that I'm using for my starter ratio and then put my flour and water and stir it again. And then I do not, I have not been stirring this throughout the day like I did my other one. But look at this, you guys. Look at all, of, I mean, it's been looking beautiful. That's awesome. All of these air pockets in here are a very good sign. And on the inside here, um, now I fed this earlier this morning, there's some bubbling action. And I did mark this, this is a dry erase marker, so this obviously is rubbing off. Um, and it's just barely coming up over that line because when I marked that line, it was like flush with that line and down. And now it's barely up over that line, so. Um, I have high hopes for this one. I really feel like it's doing great and I'm really excited. And once, what I'm waiting for now is for this to double. Um, and once this doubles at that point, then I know I'm gonna be ready to bake some bread and I will definitely bring you guys along for that when I start baking my first sourdough loaf. Now, since I have not um, brought you along for this starter day by day, I'm going to link um, the Needy Homesteader. She's the one that I've been following on this. And I was going to follow her in the first place. I kind of wish I would have from the start. But anyways, I'm going to link her sourdough starter video series down below. So if you want to follow step by step, day by day, how to feed your sourdough, she has a whole series on that. So like I said, I'm just going to bring you back on this one when I'm actually ready to bake my first loaf of sourdough bread. But in the meantime, I thought I would go ahead and show you today, um, take you along with me as I bake a uh, loaf of bread. It's one of my favorite bread baking recipes and I'm going to be using regular store-bought yeast. I finally found some again. So I picked some up. So I am going to bake a loaf of bread today and I wanted to take you along with me for that. Okay, so starting out, I have one and a half cups of lukewarm water. I have two teaspoons of dry active yeast, 
That's the only yeast that I could find. It didn't matter. Um, two teaspoons of sugar, or you could use honey. One teaspoon of salt. Two tablespoons of dry milk. And I have four cups of flour. So I am going to add the yeast and the sugar to my water and give that a good stir. And since this is dry active yeast, I'm going to let that set for 10 minutes to let that yeast uh, start to proof and bubble up. And now we can see our yeast proofed beautifully. So I am going to add that into the flour as well as the rest of our ingredients. Now, I totally forgot to add the butter into this recipe. Um, I had it sitting in the microwave melted and forgot about it, but that's okay. It did not ruin the recipe by any means. It still turned out well. Now that I have all my ingredients combined, I just start to stir that together with a spatula. Now, if you wanted to make this process really simple at this point, throw this into your KitchenAid mixer if you have one with the dough hook and let that do the work for you. I do not currently have a KitchenAid mixer, so I like to knead my dough by hand. Um, well, I have to, but I actually really enjoy it. So I'm just putting out some flour on my counter. Now I did have to add in some more water because my dough was really, really dry. You could see here. Um, so this is something you just kind of get a feel for. If it's really dry and crumbly, just add a tad bit more water, warm water, um, and just get it to where it's a little more sticky, not like super, super wet, but you want it a little bit sticky. Once I finally got it to the consistent consistency that I wanted and it was sticking together better, I put that out onto my counter and I started to knead it. The kneading process can take, I mean, I have it take upwards of 10 minutes sometimes. In this case today, it really only took me maybe five minutes. This dough came together super quickly once I got it out on the counter. Once that's all kneaded and put together, what I'm looking for is a really smooth dough ball. Um, once it gets really smooth and stops being so sticky, that's when you know it's ready. You can let it rest um, and let it rise. Now, a little trick that I've learned too after I've been kneading it for a while and it's still just a little bit sticky or tacky, just let it sit for like one minute. Don't touch it. And then when you come back to it, I notice that it's much more smooth and easier to work with. So I'm just going to keep working with this until I get it the consistency I want. And then I'm going to put it in a greased bowl um, and let it rise for an hour. Now you can see that my dough has definitely doubled in size, so I'm going to just gently deflate this dough. Then I'm going to put it out on my counter and flatten it out and roll it up. So as I stated, now I'm just gonna put this out on my counter. I'm gonna flatten this out. You can put your bread pan up in front of this so you can see what size, how flattened out you need to have this. Um, but I'm just flattening it out, trying to get all the air bubbles out. And then I'm going to tightly start to roll this up and tuck the ends in on both sides. And then I'm going to pinch that together really well, try to seal that as good as I can, and then put that into my greased loaf pan where it's going to rise for another 20 minutes. So now you can see my dough has risen beautifully in the loaf pan. And here's just a little <laughs> quick sneak peek at my new sourdough starter. Looks beautiful. I did remember to take it out of the oven this time while I was preheating it. Thank God. So now I'm just going to bake this loaf at 350 degrees for 25 to 30 minutes. This loaf of bread turned out so beautiful and I want you to hear me tap on this. Thank you. 
That hollow sound that you just heard is exactly what you want to hear that lets you know that your bread is cooked and done all the way through. I like to put um, some butter on it while it's hot so it melts right over the top. It'll help soften that top crust. Of course, if you want it really crusty, crunchy, you don't have to do this step, but it just adds a really nice flavor and texture. Plus, I forgot to put my butter in anyway, so... I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you would try baking some of your own bread if you have not yet done so. And I will see you guys next time.